Please subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to get the regular updates of my channel and do not forget to like, comment and share. Hello everyone. Welcome back to SaaS with ServiceNow. This is part of short series of learning client scripts in ServiceNow. In this video, you will learn about onload client scripts in ServiceNow. So what is onload client script? Onload client script runs when user opens the form and before user can enter any data on the form. It is usually used to set default values on the form or showing a message or pop-up while form is opened. So overall, if you want to take some action on the form, when form is being loaded, then you can use onload client script. And if you have to create onload client script, then you have to select type as onload on the client script form. Once you will select the onload type, you will see a function onload which is automatically created or populated in the script field. And in this function, you can write your own code as per the action you want to take, you want to perform as per the requirement you have from your customers and clients. So whatever action you want to perform on the form while form is being loaded, then you can write that script under this function. Major use cases of onload client script. So showing P1 message alert if the priority of the current incident is P1. Setting logged in user in the caller field on incident form. So let's say I'm clicking on new button and it is loading the form. Now, while form is being loaded, I want to populate the logged in user on that field that is caller field. And the next use case is showing message on the top of the form if user is VIP user. The system should check if the user is VIP, the user in the caller field is VIP or not. If he or she is a VIP user, then there should be a message on the top of the form. Let me show you some practical examples of onload client scripts. And I will be showing you few scenarios. And the first scenario we have is when P1 incident is opened, then there should be an alert which says this incident is P1 incident. That means when we have existing incident, which is a P1 incident. And if any user is opening that record, that means it will open the form. And when that form will be loaded, then user should see this alert that this incident is P1 incident. Now, in order to achieve this requirement, we have to create onload client script. So let's go to my personal developer instance and we will directly go to incident maybe. I will go to list of incidents and here I will go to client scripts so i have client scripts over here so these are all client scripts for incident table i will click on new i will provide a name over here let's say populate alert for p1 i will keep desktop as ui type i will select onload type now here we have this function you can see it is automatically populated. Now here under this function I will write all of my script. So whatever code I want to execute I have to write under this function. So as per the use case if the priority of the incident is P1 then I should see that alert message. So before I show that alert message I have to definitely check the condition condition of that particular record. 
So in that case, what I will do, I will first get the value, whatever value we have in priority field. So for that, I will just create a variable where and I will make it full screen. I will make it big so that you can see the whole code properly. So I will do priority, maybe PRI. And then I will do G underscore form dot get value. And here I will put the name of the field. So I will do priority. And then now I have to validate it. So I have to check the condition. So if PRI equal to equal to if it is one, if the priority is one, that's a backend value. Then that means this is the condition we are using. So if the priority of the incident is one, then I should see a pop up and that pop up is so I will do alert semicolon and I will do this is or this incident is a P1 incident. That's it. So we have got the value and we are just populating that pop-up basically alert which will tell this incident is a p1 incident but it will only show if the incident priority will be p1 so in that case i will click on save so i'm going to create this client script so client script is created i will minimize it and now i will go to incident list and I will open any racket, maybe the P11 where we have this critical. So uh, let's open this one first. Will I see any alert? So you can see I'm not getting, this is a browser alert. I think this is something uh, which is different. I think this is a test I created. So this is not uh, the same alert. So maybe I will disable this. I think that is better so that we understand that why exactly I'm getting this alert. So let me just disable that quickly. So I will go to client scripts. So I have this test you can see. Maybe I will make it inactive. So I will make it false. To deactivate this, I will make it false. And if I open the list of rackets again and open any racket, incident racket so now you will see that it is not populating any alert because we don't have p1 incident here so it's not critical and what i will do now i will go to this list again let's open this one that's our condition now, if i will open this incident it should definitely show that alert so if i click on this one you can see it says this incident is a P1 incident automatically. And it is showing this alert when form is basically loading. So that's how you use onload client script. Let's see another use case. The second scenario for onload client script is when new incident form is opened, then caller should be automatically populated with current logged in user. So whomsoever will log in to the system and will click on new button. That means the new incident form. Then we have the caller field that that caller field should automatically show the name of the logged in user. So if I go to my personal developer instance and if I click on create new as of now, out of the box, you will see that it is not showing any user in this particular field. But that is the requirement that I have to show. So if user is clicking on new button, then when form is getting loaded, then user's name should be populated over here automatically. Now, in order to do that, 
I again have to write client script because this requirement can be achieved with the help of client script. So I will directly go to client script then. I will click on new button because I have to create a new client script. I will provide the name populate caller field populate caller. I think this is okay. Populate caller. I will run it on desktop. Here I will select on load same like we did before. And now I have to write the script. Now I have to set a value. Now service now provides an API where you can set a value on the form on the client. That means at client level, you can set that value. How can you do that? You can do it with the help of G underscore form APIs and its methods. But if I have to set a value, how exactly I will come to know about the current logged in user. Now for that, I have to use another APIs. So let's do one thing. Let's first get the user. So maybe I will, I will get users society and then I will also get basically display name of the users society. The whatever user record I have, I will just try to get the display name as well. But that's what you use in uh, when you when you set the value on the form. So what I will do, I will do uh, u sys id equal to I can do g underscore user dot and here we have this user id. Now this will give me the sys id of the user. So if I will do tab semicolon. And then I do you maybe a value and I will do G underscore user dot. Now this time I want to get display value and I think username should be good. So I will do username. Ideally, I think the display value is full name, but I think this should also work if I'm not wrong. Maybe we can put full name. Let's use that get full name. So we will get the full name. And now what I will do, I will do G underscore form dot. I will do set. And that's what you use for client scripts. If you have to set a value on the client, you use G underscore form dot set value. I will make it big screen so that you can see the code properly. Now, when you use this set value method, you have to provide some parameters. The first parameter is the field and that field is caller underscore ID. Next is you can put the society. So because it's a reference field. So what I will do, I will uh, just put you. Maybe I will just copy this one and put it over here. And then I will put the display value. That is the full name. So I will just do semicolon. Now, is this code complete? The answer is no. And the reason behind it, because if you will save this record, save this client script, then it will run for all situation. But if I talk about the requirement, the requirement is this functionality should only run for new record. Because for existing record, it should not run. It should not set any other value. Otherwise, your form will be broken. So let's say if you will write this script and you already have existing records where you already have caller feed filled. And if somebody else is opening that record, then his name or her name will be populated in the caller ID field. And that's totally wrong. 
So in that case, you will put a condition. What condition? We will come over here. And that condition is, so we will again use g underscore form API and we will use the method dot is new racket. Now this is something checks if the current racket, the form which is being opened, is it the form of new racket? Then only it will run. So what I will do, I will do, is it a new form? If the answer is true, then it should run, else it should not run. So what I will do now, I will just click on save. So I'm going to create this client script that is populate caller. And that is also on incident table. Now this time, if I, let me just make it small screen a little bit. And I just go to incident maybe. And if I click on create new, let's see. Now you can see over here, initially we will not getting our name. That means because I have logged in with administrator. So I was not getting this system administrator before, before we wrote this client script. But now you can see this is automatically populating. Even if I will uh, maybe impersonate with any other user, you will definitely say this. But if I open this, let's say I will open it for existing uh, incident racket. Maybe let's let's yeah let's check it first with this uh, ID. So maybe I will click on open, and I will open any existing racket. You will see we already have survey user. Basically, this is not being replaced with my ID. And the reason behind it, because you use that condition that if G underscore form is new record and it is, and if I was clicking on create new, so that was the new record, but this is not new record. This is definitely the existing record of the system. Let me impersonate with any other user so that you will get better idea that it is working for other users as well, not just for admins. So if I click on, if I'm just impersonating that idle user and I just directly go to incident and I click on create new, you will see that magic. And you can see that my name is again automatically populated in caller field and I have impersonated. Uh, you can say I'm logged in as well, but as of now I have impersonated with this user that is idle user and my name is populated over here. This is how you can create different types of onload client scripts as per the different use cases, different requirements you will get from your customers and clients.